Rocket League. Rocket League never changes. Except that's bollocks, isn't it? Because the 10 pro skills you're about to learn weren't even things when we made our last video on the topic back in 2016. So apologies to all your grand champ wannabes. Reaching the big leagues is now trickier than ever. Remember, the tips in this video are mere launch pads, quick intros to moves that each have entire skill ceilings in their own right. So what we're gonna do is link the best full tutorial for each move in the description. We're helpful like that. Anyway, here we go. Back in the day, nailing a flip reset meant you were literally Jazer and could quit the day job and release sick freestyle montages on YouTube all day long. Now, Just there are competitive the necessity. Off. Defensive rotations are so tightly drilled that the only way to score sometimes is to make yourself unreadable. So if you're mechanically skillful enough to land all four of your car's wheels on the ball at the same time, then you get that all-important dodgeback. From there, you can scoop it up by flipping straight away. He's from Barcelona almost out of nowhere. Oh, Beautiful catch on the flip reset. Scoop it up, then continue an air dribble. Everyone, he gets a flip reset <laughs> and carries it past the defender. Give it a sec, now. smack it again, this time with feeling. Like would love to try and benefit a foul. Oh! What a flip reset! Toss off! Link it with 18 other high-level mechanics, like whatever Justin does here. Top of North America changes. If any oh. HP on the ball, Fred Justin! Or even option D, none of the above. The good old flippy R fake. Fireburner on accident, and that's why Fireburner completely missed the hit on that one. And Garrett! Wow! Best of all, just like the phrase, Are you kidding me? Casters love him. Here comes Rodoko yet again. He's feeling it. Jordan, oh no. back to no. Rodoko! Wait! Are you kidding me right now? The smaller the car, the easier the move. So if the Batmobile just ain't cutting it, there's no shame in switching to the good old reliable Octane. Wanna go pro? Well, you gotta go fast. Irritating hedgehog again. But it's not Sanic Hedgehog that gave this move its name. Instead, it's his tennis and Olympic Games buddy, Mario. The Rocket League community ripped the term wave dash straight from Super Smash Bros, in which that gorgeous Italian plumber and his far less muscular buddies use wave dashes to slide gleefully across the screen before brutally murdering each other with hammers and fire. He's too good for Princess Peach anyway. Rocket League's Wave VD is way less brutal, but it's equally important. Wave Dash, by dodging forwards when your back wheels hit the floor, usually after jumping off the side of the arena for a quick and instant speed burst. But unlike my crazy house parties, they're not always off the wall. <coughs> you can force a Wave Dash at any time. So why bother when you could just dodge? One, because it's cooler. Two, because you can change your mind in midair and pull out. Three, because you can nudge the ball to the side at a more extreme angle. Four, because sometimes with a dodge, you'll have to decide between either gently scraping the ball with all four wheels or waiting a split second longer and ending up being beaten to the ball entirely. Five, because it can give a sweet dribble and explosive end. And six, because it really is cooler. Ah. You can even go full speed skater and bust out whatever this thing is. Not sure it's competitively viable, but it sure looks fabulous. Almost good enough for my baby boy, Mario. The year is 2016, and future RLCS champion Overzero has just scored the greatest Rocket League goal of all time, en route to beating Maki Duda's flip side tactics in the grand finals. Just look at the mechanics. Just look at what it means to them. Fist bumps all around, chums. We really can win this thing. Fast forward three years, and air drips have evolved even beyond when we last mentioned them. They're still more for gaining territory though, and good ones relieve a ton of pressure at the highest level to this day. Buying your team the time they need to rotate back to defense, grab themselves some boost, watch the entirety of Game of Thrones, and rage on social media about the woeful eighth season. How did they mess it up so badly? Air dribbles can be launched from the wall or the floor, and there are a ton of packs to practice with. Check the description for our favorite. And remember, 
The less boost your opponents have, the more effective your air dribble will be. Even at the pro level, air dribbles can still sometimes lead to goals, usually by sprinkling in a little extra dash of fanciness. Like faking they've run out of boost, tempting a defender to challenge for the ball, like poor old innocent Turbo Pulsar here, and then yeeting it late. Yeeting it late? Is that the is that the term? Into the far corner. Or by doing whatever the hell this is, courtesy of our man Justin. My favourite though is when these monsters time a dodge so they reach the ball at the end of their flip. It sticks to their nose like gum on nice jeans, allowing them to air dribble on their merry way at full speed. When a pair of pros dive headfirst into the ball, it ain't no coin flip. What you're actually witnessing is a delicate ballet a brutal tug of war, and, yes, an impassioned prayer to the gods of RNG, all at the same time. Nobody cheats on C9, and the way I cheat is once the ball is killed, I usually try to take it to the corner because everybody guards the net. And you can easily get past one person if you just go to the corner, a lot of times. So am I trying to say that challenges are an exact science? No, more of an art. But take the most famous example in history, Game 7 of a bracket reset in RLCS Season 5, zero seconds left. Was Fireburner aiming for this precise spot? Of course not, but what he did do was consciously jump after Turbo Pulsar, thus using his car to force pinch the ball upwards instead of straight down. The term 50-50 just don't do it justice. This one works both ways. All those times you cursed the old gods and the new when the ball pinched directly oh, into your no, own net no, from the no, opponent's no, half. No, no, save me tackers. <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm so unlucky. That was such a good challenge. Not bad I luck, you dumb lovely. balding ginger. It was a bad challenge. You need to read your opponent to the extent that you can still manipulate the ball when they're taking a chunk out of it too. And unlike that hilarious clip of me streaming over at twitch.tv slash subparbitnhd, you need to be aware of where each player is on the pitch at all times. Last man back, best just go for that fake challenge, because if you go for the wonder dunk, this could happen. Talk about an absolute gift. Dodging used to be as basic as yo mama, but now even that's become complicated AF. Don't believe me? Check these out. 1. Early dodges aka preflips. Mostly used when leaping off walls, an early dodge locks your car's verticality, meaning you float majestically into the target like a manatee, nuzzling its nose into an idea ball. Oh, she came up with Gary Coleman. Early dodges are great at maximizing boost and can help you beat your opponent to the ball even if you have none. They're super tough to time as you have to judge the ball's flight to perfection, dodge too early or too late, prepare for an inevitable and embarrassing miss but time it right, and you, my friend, will become a god. There's also pre-flipping from the flow, where dodging earlier lets you flick the ball in unique directions as you use parts of your car that your opponents never see coming. Tricky to nail, but even harder to defend. Poor guy doesn't stand a chance. Numero 2 flip cancels. Dodge into your hit all you like, but if your car ends up making sweet floppy love to the wall, you'll end up miles out the play while it finishes. Even if you can land on all four wheels, you might still be locked into that pesky flip animation during the time you could be boosting towards that all-important second touch. This is where the flip cancel, which you may have thought was only used because it looks cool and to be fair sometimes that's the case, comes into its own. Just flick your stick straight down after dodging forwards, or straight up after dodging backwards, and you'll get the power of a full dodge without going full flip mode. If you're struggling to do this, increasing your dead zone can help. The extra control this brings can lead to the awesome goals that you're seeing right now, all of which were scored by the much more mechanically talented players in the sub par discord, which you should totally join, because our community is officially the best in Rocket League. There's a link in the description.
Numero three. Stools? Uh, yeah, we don't really teach that sort of thing here. What you want to do is type stool tutorial into the YouTube search bar. Good luck with the septuple flip resets though. I believe in you, dude. Just stole this flip. There's no, even if you go up for this, if you just... Despite the way it looks, this is not flying. It's falling with style. And no one's ever used a ceiling shot to generate more buzz or more woodies than our very own evil Emperor Zerg himself, Squishy Muffins. Here is the most famous ceiling shot of all. So quick summary of what made that goal so special. Dodge usually run out. Fall from ceiling equals dodge no run out. That means dodge whenever. Season 4 RLCS Defender No Able Gets Block. Goal. If your opponents have boost in the tank and good defensive positioning, they can usually block these now with absolute ease. But if they're stretched or they're not expecting it, maybe you got bumped up there, they can still be devastating. To do one, hit the ball away from the wall, about 45 degrees when it's just above the ramp. Then drive up, fall down, panic your opponents, dodge whenever. Sometimes you'll need to speed things up by jumping up to the ceiling. Sometimes you'll need to jump off it. But don't forget, if you do jump from the ceiling, your dodge will once again run out, forcing you to connect with the ball within that time frame. To the untrained eye, the in and out save can seem show-offy and ultimately very pointless. But it's actually a great way to reach top corner boomers without wasting a shred of precious boost. Great for boost management and the environment. No problem, polar bears. This save's a great one to bust out when you're sprinting desperately towards your own goal and a shot's about to fly in. Thankfully, the in and out save has your back. But wait, there's more. The so-called squishy save also lets you dodge the ball in any direction of your choice, potentially starting a counter-attack, which, by the way, your car is already traveling in the right direction to continue. So if any of those silly old teammates claim that your use of the twirly-whirly goalmouth save was unjustified, tell them to f*** off. <laughs> There once existed a gentleman's agreement that ensured that you'd only get bumped on the ground, usually when waiting in goal. Ah, <sighs> those really were some good times. But nowadays, it's a gosh darn bloodbath. Oh my goodness, that was the fastest aerial I've ever seen. Nothing compares to the absolute sense of helplessness you'll be forced to feel when your ball-bound battle car is unceremoniously barged into by some bloodlusting beast on the opposite team. One second, you're sailing peacefully to get the block. The next, you're scared and disoriented, somewhere in the center of the map, never even knowing what hit you, until the replay confirms that some absolute meanie decided to come along and spoil all your fun. Next time you're watching the pros, keep an eye on how often they go for each other. Bumps are interwoven into the very fiber of the upper echelons of the game. Dribbles and air dribbles become acts of aggression. Rotating defenders snipe in an instant. Three-man plays only require two to actually go for the ball. I always do that when I'm in offense. I always look around for the demos. I always look around for what kind of opportunities I can create, what, what kind of demos. So how does this translate to the real world? Well, you should do what they do and train yourself to regularly flick ball cam on and off when those pesky opponents are chilling in your blind spot. And if they're the last man back and you and your teammate are 2v1, one of those rare occasions where you really should be scoring, or you've just made contact with the ball and you have the time, space and defensive cover to get in front of it, oh, he is, oh, or most commonly, you're retreating already and going for the bump won't pull you too far out the rotation, then you should never be afraid to desecrate your enemy's no claims bonus. I'm behind you, I'm behind you. I'm up post. You can go something, find you, mate. 
killed the whole team. Got him. If you're in public, then turn to the bloke next to you, that's right, the one with the teardrop tattoo, and flick him in the ear as hard as you can. He probably won't be impressed, so quickly explain to him that it's a metaphor, and that all we're trying to do is demonstrate how frustrating it is to come up against an absolute mother flicker in Rocket League. He'll understand. There are tons of tutorials out there, but basic flicking is letting the ball roll onto your roof and then dodging diagonally. Better the timing, the further and harder the ball flies. It's cool, but it's basic, but there are so many variations that they're really hard to do. But pros can nail them all. Tornado sure flicks, to musty no flicks, wave dash flicks, flicks 45 or 180 degree flicks, guaranteed to score a goal every time no matter how good the defenders are flicks, even Brilliant fake flicks. Here. It's all about mind games when you get in the one-on-one -on -one and boy does he get speed to fight. He These are all important skills to have at high goals. levels so you can mix up your floor play. And as my girlfriend always says, good floor play is the key to any good finish. So practice your net flicks and chill. Sometimes the pros bust out the pixie dust and just do things. Diva, season five, landed on the backboard and just did a thing. Same season, Garrett bumped onto the roof, reflexively did a thing, ball ended up in net. RLCS Season 7 League Play, Chaussette does a thing that chained a ceiling wave dash, something we didn't even mention in the wave dash section of this video with a flip cancel to force a greater angle and send the ball down into the net. And then, there's this. The beauty of this is that you can't just teach this stuff. These players were born with it. All we mere mortals can do is sit back, relax, and witness Garrett, Gimmick, Squishy, Justin, Cooksey, Bluey, insert your favorite flair player here, do what they do best, and maybe try and replicate them as best we can. Until next time, sub, par, out. All right. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to sub and all that boring stuff. But also, more importantly, get yourself in our Discord and we can discuss future video ideas and Rocket League esports and how cute your pet cat is. It is a very, very cute cat, I've got to say. Uh, the link's got pride of place right at the top of the description. So give it a click and give it a join and hopefully we'll see you there. Farewell.